Hello there, welcome to my channel on chemistry lessons and this is a BTEC applied science, it's unit 5 chemistry and we're going to be looking at the January 2018 exam paper. So here it is here, you were given two and a half hours for this exam, however that does include sections A, B and C, so this did include biology, chemistry and physics. First up, if you don't subscribe to my channel, please do. Your support is very much appreciated. And please take advantage of the likes and comments features. Let me know what we think. Okay, so questions one to five on this paper were in fact biology. So the chemistry section, which is section B, begins at question six. Question number six, many metal oxides and hydroxides are basic. Identify the pH of a basic metal hydroxide. Well, basic means high pH, so it's going to be um, basic or above seven. So my answer here is going to be D. Aluminium oxide is an amphoteric metal oxide. State what is meant by the term amphoteric. That means it can act as both an acid and a base. You could have said it would react with both acids and bases. Part C, sodium hydroxide is a base and an alkali. Copper hydroxide is a base, but not an alkali. The difference between an alkali and a base is that an alkali is simply a base that will dissolve in water. So the main reason or the reason that sodium hydroxide is an alkali is because sodium hydroxide is soluble. So sodium hydroxide will dissolve and copper hydroxide will not. So sodium hydroxide will dissolve in water. So the last part of the first question then, manganese for oxide is a transition metal compound. It can be used as a catalyst to speed up reactions. Explain why it can act as a catalyst. So what I'm gonna say here is that it lowers activation energy. So it lowers the activation energy by offering an alternative reaction pathway. This speeds up the rate of reaction. Why in particular transition metals? Well, transition metals have variable oxidation states. They have variable oxidation states. And can transfer electrons easily using their incomplete D subshell. I've said more than enough for four marks here. Question seven then. The properties of organic compounds depend on their structure and bonding. Name this compound. Right, okay, I've got to identify the longest chain. One, two, three, four, five. Pentane. So it's an alkane, it's pentane. Number them one, two, three, four, five, and again in reverse. One, two, three, four, five, because there's a methyl group here on the second carbon. So I'm going to call this 2-methyl-pentane for one mark. C4 has two structural isomers. Okay, so structural isomers, they could be chain, position, functional group. Now this is an alkane. I'm recognizing C4H10 as an alkane. So I'm going to identify a straight chain and a branch. So one, 
two, three, four carbons. Now I have to draw the displayed, so I must draw all of the bonds and all of the atoms. So this is C4H10, and this is just going to be called butane. And now I'm going to draw a branched version of this. So one, two, three, four. There's my four carbons. Draw my hydrogens on there now. And this is going to be called methyl propane. Now I could call it 2-methyl propane. Strictly speaking, the 2 is not needed because it couldn't go anywhere else. But methyl propane. State why hexane has a higher boiling point than methane. Well, hexane is a bigger molecule. It's got stronger van der Waals forces. So it's got a bigger molecular mass. So bigger MR. Therefore, stronger van der Waals forces. Okay, next part. Alkenes are unsaturated hydrocarbons. Alkenes can be obtained by cracking. Identify the general formula for an alkene. Right, I can spot it straight off. It's the first one, CNH2N. The second one would actually be, this would be for an alkane. Don't even know what this one is, it just looks off it, so we'll, we'll ignore that one. Right, so moving on to part two. Complete the equation for the cracking of decane to form one molecule of propene. So propene will be C3H6 and one other molecule. Right, I've got to work this out then. If I started with 10 carbons and three of them have gone to propene, this must be C7, there must be seven carbons left. And do the same with 22. There were 22 hydrogens, 22 take away six, 16. So one mark for each of those, one mark for C3H6 and one mark for C7H16. Alkenes can have stereoisomers. Yes, I know they can. That's the EZ cis trans thing. Explain why dichloroethene have cis and trans. Explain why. You may use drawings, but I'm definitely going to use drawings. So ethene is two carbons. Draw them twice. Dichloro, so chlorine, chlorine, hydrogen, hydrogen. I've drawn the Z or the cis there. So now draw the trans. There we go. I've drawn the cis and the trans of dichloroethene. This one on the left I'm going to call cis or the Z isomer. And the one on the right is trans, also known as the E isomer over here. It does say explain though, so I'm going to say um, due to restricted free rotation around the carbon carbon double bond and two different groups. attached to both carbons. Bosch. Last part of this question then. Alkanes contain sigma bonds. Alkenes contain both sigma and pi bonds. Explain in terms of sigma and pi bonds why alkenes are more reactive. Right, okay. Well, pi bonds are weaker than sigma bonds. I'm going to say that a pi bond is the overlap of p orbitals above and below the carbon atoms. It's an area of high electron density.
and can be attacked by electrophiles. I could at this point if I wanted to have sketched the difference between a pi and a sigma bond. But the whole point is that when an alkene reacts, it's the pi bond that breaks. So alkenes react and pi bond breaks. On to question eight. Ethanol is often used as a biofuel. It's a liquid at room temperature. Write the balanced equation for the standard molar enthalpy of formation of ethanol. So it wants an equation for the enthalpy formation of ethanol. Right, so it's the formation, so I'm forming one mole of ethanol. And they've told us it's a liquid. So it must be standard state, standard conditions. It's going to form from its elements, in this case, carbon, which is a solid. And I'll need two moles of carbon. It's going to require hydrogen gas as an element. There's five, there's six on the right, so I need three H2. And then I need O2 gas. And I only need half of this because there's only one oxygen. So that's the only correct answer there. It's worth three marks that. Okay. So I must make sure it's one mole of ethanol on the right, first of all. I must make sure there are elements on the left, and we need to know that hydrogen is H2 gas and oxygen is O2 gas, carbon is a solid, and then we must make sure it's balanced. And half an O2 is the only way we can get one oxygen atom that we need for that right-hand side. Give one reason why the standard enthalpy change of formation cannot be measured directly. Well, we would get a mixture of products. So we could not carry that out because we would end up with a mixture of products here. Part B, the enthalpy change of combustion was determined using a calorimeter. So this is that calorimetry practical now. The mass of the water was 250. The amount of ethanol was 0 0.016 moles. The initial temperature was 293. The final temperature was 303. Specific capacity is 4.18. Show that the heat produced by burning 0.16 moles of ethanol is approximately 10970. They're actually giving us the formula look, that Q is MC delta T, which is my stage name on a Saturday night. Um, so it's mass of water. OK, they've been quite kind because they haven't even given you the mass of ethanol. It's a mass of water. So 250 times 4.18 times delta T, change in temperature. So the temperature has gone up by 10.5. So it's times 10.5. Get my calculator. 250 times 4.18 times by 10.5 equals 10972.5. And that's what I've done. I've shown that it's approximately 10970. So that's my nice easy three marks there, I think. A further three marks here then. The heat energy produced from burning 0.16 moles of ethanol is, so they're telling me the answer again. Calculate the enthalpy change. Ah, right, okay. Now remember, Q and delta H are not the same thing. Q is in joules, delta H is kilojoules per mole. So we need to divide it by a thousand to get it into kilojoules. And then we divide by the moles to get it per mole. So here we go. 10970 divided by a thousand equals 10.97. So I've now got kilojoules. Then I need to divide that by 0 0.016 to get it into kilojoules per mole. So 10.97 divided by 0 0.016. I'll do that on my calculator. 
0.97 divided by 0 0.016 equals 685.625. That's kilojoules per mole. And I must make sure that I ask myself the sign because the sign for Q was irrelevant, but the sign for delta H was essential. Delta H is negative if it's exothermic and positive if it's endothermic. This was an exothermic reaction because the temperature of the water of the surroundings went up. So my answer is minus 685.625. Question nine now. Free radical reactions are important in the organic chemical industry. Some polymers are made by the free radical polymerization of alkenes. Identify the type of reaction used in the free radical polymerization of alkenes. Right, what is it? Addition, hydration. Right, okay, what we're doing here then is we're, it's addition polymer, it's actually called addition polymerization because you are adding monomers together. It's not hydration because hydration would mean you were adding water. It's not oxidation because that would mean we were adding oxygen. And substitution would mean we're swapping places. We're not. We're adding monomers together. Drawing a repeat unit. Well, this is what we do is we break the double bond. And then we draw the bonds coming out from some brackets. And that's all I do. I just break that double bond and I now just whatever groups were there are still there. So it was a CH2 and a CH2. It's now just a CH2 with brackets around it and showing those bonds coming out. Final question, then final part, six marks here. Let's zoom in so we can see the question at least here. So chloromethane is produced when chlorine reacts with methane explain the three stages of free radical metal oh, here we go right so the first stage is known as the initiation so there's my first stage this is the free radical substitution of alkanes so the initiation is going to require uv light and it's going to be chlorine making two chlorine free radicals i'm going to write uv light on this arrow so there's my first stage second stage was propagation And the first stage of propagation was one of those chlorine free radicals. In this case, it's going to be reacting with methane, which is CH4. That chlorine takes off one of the H's, leaving behind a free radical of CH3. That CH3 free radical then reacts with more chlorine to make our product, plus another chlorine free radical. And a termination at the end. I've got lots of choice here for my termination steps. I'm going to pick a CH3 radical with a chlorine radical. This would terminate and it would be a CH3 Cl. I had a couple of choices for my termination step. In fact, I had three choices. I could have done this for my termination step if I wanted to. That would have been fine. I could have also done this as a termination step, which would have also been fine. That's the end of that paper then. Hopefully that was useful. Let me know what you think and good luck.